This program is made possible by the loyal financial support of the friends and partners of Family Policy Institute. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Good evening and welcome to the show. Today we have Lucia Dramat from 50 Coffees joining us and we're covering the 50 Coffees High Tea. Yes. Lucia, can you tell us a little bit more about the event, what we can expect, what speakers are lined up? Well, it's Women's Month, so we want to celebrate women. And um, so this tea is, you know, women love cake and tea. So that's what we're doing. We're having cake and tea and we're going to celebrate. We have a lovely speaker, Preston, that will be speaking to us. We have a man that's encouraging us <laughs> ladies. And then we have lots of prizes. We have a beautiful singer, Sharice, who's going to bless us with beautiful music. And, you know, it's Women's Month. As women, we have so many different roles and we mothers we wives we are sisters daughters we are managers we just do so much and so it needs to be celebrated and that's what we're doing Lucia the theme of 50 coffees is to inspire faith passion. okay you know it better than I do so yes it's inspiring faith purpose and passion because of course it's so important for women to fulfill their purpose and to really go for their passion and we have so much lined up for today. I'm so excited. So thank you so much, Lucia, for giving us the honor of covering the event today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to have you all here. Even though you didn't have cake and tea with us, you're going to see what happened here today. Thank you so much for having us here. I'm Sharice um, van Weg. This is my sister, Conita. So she will be accompanying me today. Um, we're going to do this song, You're Beautiful. And I think it is so fitting for today, especially the theme. And it's just speaking about how beautiful each and, every, each and every one is. And just to embrace your individuality. By you embracing your individuality, you are, by you being you, you're actually being different. Because there's absolutely nobody like you. And the moment you embrace that and not try to be like everybody else, that is when you really just move in that what God has purposed for you. So enjoy it. If you feel like clapping, if you feel like dancing, if you feel like driving, please feel free.
Cherise, who is our amazing vocalist for the day. So can you tell us a little bit more about the song, what inspired you and why you decided to get involved with Swifty Coffees? The reason why I wrote You Beautiful was it's basically just accepting who you are. And that is, it actually, I started realizing, that, you know what, I don't have to be like anybody else. I've started embracing that I don't have to sing like I can't, I don't have to get up high or do all the runs that Yolanda Adams does or all those other singers. I embraced my range and just enjoyed it and not compare myself to anybody else. And once I started embracing that, then I could start celebrating other people that are doing their own things, especially in local, because a lot of times we don't want to support our local artists because of jealousy or anything like that. But I realized that, you know what, we need to celebrate these people. And that is where the song came from. Um, being beautiful and accepting who God has made you because there's only one you there's absolutely nobody else like you so just be you and by you being you you're actually being different you being unique so that is where it came from and um, I actually met uh, with regards to your question about 50 coffees I met um, Lucia at a songwriters event and then I saw them advertising about 50 loop and that is it first started 50 loop when I did one song I put a demo on there and from that um, the relationship started and then eventually to where we are now we always invited to come and sing yeah <laughs> Cherise, that's so amazing that you um, have embraced who you are and that you're beautiful and that each of us are individual and beautiful the way God made us. Um, I'm really looking forward to your set when you, when you grace us with your music later. And what do you see um, going forward with um, 50 Coffees and also your music? Okay, well at the moment I've placed um, the full album on, on 50 Loop and um, so it is um, ready for purchase as well and also got some hard copies here as well but for future I really, my thing is I just want this message that God has given me, I want to share with the world. So whatever adventure comes along with it, I'm willing to embrace it and for me it's just about the message and getting it out there you know and that in this on this album there's something for everybody and um, a message in there for everybody so I'm moving with that so I'm excited to see I'm actually not sure where I'm going to be honest with you I'm not sure where I'm going I'm riding this wave and I'm enjoying it everything that comes along with it I'm enjoying it so I'm looking forward to also you know having um, doing more things together with 50 50 coffees I mean this what they're doing is awesome and I'm also excited to be here today excited to be able to share with the ladies here today Today as well the message that I have and um, yeah it's we're speaking to Adal with Dyser FM Adal it's so great to have you here with the 50 coffees event today and can you tell me a little bit more about your involvement with 50 coffees why do you feel like it's such an important thing for women to connect on this level Hi, Taryn. It's such an honor being here. Um, I'm one of, I met Lucia through church, so that's how I just st I actually stumbled upon uh, 50 coffees. And it's been such a blessing. I was privileged to be at her first event just as a guest. I went on my own and I was so blessed by, by the, the word she just brought to ladies in, in itself. And this morning I was working through the Bible and um, in 2 Corinthians, there's this verse that says, um, we are the fragrance um, to to the people that hasn't seen God and it was just so it dropped in my soul this morning saying that us as ladies need to be the fragrance amongst amongst uh, among other ladies which um, hasn't met God um, and we need to shine that that fierce and fabulous and and so I love what Lucia's doing I love how she's empowering other ladies and and training them up to have a voice because we ultimately we have a voice and it's Women's Month and we must use our voices to to draw others closer to God. Now, let's first talk about her some more. This young lady, in all her fabulousness, what she does so many amazing things. She actually is part of an NGO that goes to help women that don't have jobs and teach them how to um, do catering and how to sew and so many things that after they do the course with them, those women can then um, sustain their families and have jobs. They know how to make things. They can get jobs in sewing. And outside of that, she also has a business where she takes um, items made in more rural communities and she sells it online. 
So beautiful, beautiful things. And she's so savvy. You can see. Why is everything running so smoothly today? She's making it happen. Mbali, it's so great to have you um, on the show today. I've heard so much about you and it's really exciting all the different things that you're involved with. Can you tell our viewers just a little bit about your involvement with an, your involvement with an NPO, with skills development, um, catering, all those kind of things, but also that you have two other companies that you run as well. Yes, thank you so much for um, for having me. Um, so basically, I I have my little fingers in a couple of pies. The first one is a nonprofit organization called Elect Effect, and what we do is we we collect skills, which we then use for skills development and job creation for women who are in all sorts of different communities. I mean, I don't know if you've heard of the statistics that um, a woman tends to be looking after up to seven to 14, 14 people reliant on her and so a mentor of mine and I were just uh, sitting and thinking how can we how can we use what we have to just make another woman's life better and so this is how Elect Effect came about it was really a, a big vision in her heart and when I when I when I got hold of the vision I really wanted to run with it as well so we use the events industry we've got events courses catering courses we've got a beauty course and we've got sewing courses as well um, which we then, with all of them, have personal development as well. So learning to know yourself, learning to know how you relate to, to, to the people around you and how you as a woman can make an impact. So take the skill and, and the personal development and using that to just better your life as a woman as well. And then I've got two uh, two companies. Um, the one is called Isi Bale Africa, which I started uh, three years ago, helping women to start and grow their own businesses. I would come across so many amazing women who have these amazing visions, who have these amazing ideas. And when I saw these ideas, I thought to myself, this is actually something that you can take um, and it will not only empower the, the people that you will be working with, but it will empower you as well. And so I connect with women um, on all different platforms to help them then start and grow their own businesses. So everything from registrations to um, to putting together business plans, marketing, branding, and so forth. Just taking an idea from an idea to making it into something. And then the third one um, is called Isiba Moments. We do we create, manage, and promote uh, bespoke events and weddings. So that is just anything um, celebratory, and uh, we help you put that together. So many souls die by destruction in this world. Why are we so blind? Conceives majestic power. Things we do from time to time. So all messed up, it's driven by perversion, lust and pride. Housekeeping won't have scotch, him leaving schoolhouse. Talk of the past, never heard of it anymore. Little girls, mothers, boys, or fathers, that's the name. We are speaking to Aniska now and she's joining us at the 50 Coffees event. Aniska, how have you enjoyed the event so far and how did you come about to attend today? Well, the theme is fierce and fabulous, and I think it really is fierce and fabulous at the moment. Um, the food's good, the company is good. Um, I actually got married in this venue, so it's been a really nice uh, bit of uh, like reminder of what I've been through and just some awesome memories. Um, I came about this event because my mother-in-law is actually Arlene I do, and she invited me here, so I just came with her. So I'm spending some time with my mother-in-law. That's great. So good to have you. Um, so, Aniska, can you maybe share just a little bit about what do you think are some of the issues that women today face? I think that most women um, struggle with self-esteem, um, just 
what women have been through in life. And um, I think that this event is also just important to hear guest speakers give us some encouragement and just tell us how important our role is in society, and it really is. Um, and I think that if women start working on their own self-esteem and just realize how important they are, not only in the sight of society, but also in God's sight, um, then that would uplift their self-esteem and, and bring about change. And if you were to give just a quick encouragement to the women out there, what would it be? Never give up. No matter how hard your situation is, God will always use that situation and turn it into something good. Thank you so much. Thank you. As you know, I've, I've explained to you what 50 Coffees is about. So when I thought about someone speaking here today, um, I went back and forth and I interviewed a lot of ladies. So I wanted someone that I interview, if it's a lady, to speak here um, because I wanted to stay consistent with the brand and what we do. Obviously, there are a lot of other women I find very inspiring, but because they haven't done an interview with 50 Coffees yet, I didn't think it was appropriate. And then I thought, what do us ladies like more than... You know, a man telling us how fabulous we are and just complimenting us and worshipping the ground we walk on. <laughs> so I thought, how about we get a man in here to just come shower us in all our fabulousness and just enjoy it <laughs> for, for a few minutes. So um, today I've got author, CCFM radio presenter, motivational speaker, and he does so many things. I'm sure you'll share a little bit more about himself. His book is also there. I'm sure you'll share a little bit about that as well. And he's going to come share with us today. He's going to encourage us, and he's also just going to compliment us shamelessly. <laughs> oh, welcome, Preston. Now, I must be honest with you, it, it's probably one of the most intimidating um, talks I've ever had to, because I realize I'm the only man here, um, besides the technical people. Um, and so, guess what? I speak for a living, so I do this every single day. Um, and so, I'm really intimidated, because I'm thinking to myself, a bunch of women, um, I have one that I'm married to, and that's enough. Um, and so... Um, I'm really happy to be here. Lucia, thank you for having me. Um, I, I'm ser seriously honored to be here. Um, and I think I've been, I've been kind of going back and forth, kind of deciding what angle am I going to speak about. And, and I thought, you know, the best way to do this is to, 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 to talk about some of the, the women in my life. And I think the reason why I can speak um, about the women in my life, because there is a concept that every woman in my life has that I believe is a concept that's sitting in this room. And there's some things that I as a man had endured um, as a man growing up in a, in a home and I'm going to share with you personal stuff which I don't often do. Um, but uh, before I get there, I, I want to give you a, what qualifies me to, ser to say certain things today. Um, I, I, I come from a, a, a strong sporting background where I played professional football. I know I don't look like it anymore. Um, but the reality of the matter is I did play professional football. Um, and I saw I was overseas for a bit. And, and I came back home and, 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 and I, ha I made money and I lost money. Um, I made Success and I lost success. And, and, and I look back over my life and I try to find and con try to see what contributed to that difficult times in my life. And I had to go back to when I was a kid. And, and I retraced that things. And as I retraced that things, I, I, I discovered some stuff that I believe the moment I identified it, I could rectify it. When I could rectify it, I know that I'm living right now in the most successful time of my life. Now here's what I want to share with you quick and then I'm going to allow you to kind of resonate with some of the stuff I'm going to say. Now if I get, get you to cry, that was my intention. <laughs> uh, because what is a fabulous thing, event like this without women crying? Because <laughs> uh, we're not going to cry about the past but we're going to cry about what God is about to do in our lives. You know, and so I want to take you back. The talk that I've, I've titled this talk it's a moment in time. You see, time is something that you don't remember because no one in this room can, can remember minute by minute every event in our lives. But it's the thing within time that we often remember most, which is moments. 
You see, because moments shape our characters, it shapes our thinking, and oftentimes shapes our decision-making going forward. Now, there's some good moments in our lives and there's some bad moments in our life. Don't underestimate the negative moments in your life because the, the negative moments in your life squeeze the life out of you to bring about life. Because if it had not been for that negative moment in your life, you probably wouldn't have had the intellect and the intelligence to go through what you've gone through, but to work your way out of that situation. Now stay with me. My three women that I want to focus on this morning is three women that significantly impacted my life. The first woman is a very close family friend bordering on sister. So now if you're in the colored community, the neighbor is actually your sister. Okay. In the, you're actually a sister, so I'm going to say, but she's not my biological sister, but she, I grew up with her, so she was my nanny kind of person, looked after me when my mom had to go and work. And so her name is Eunice. Eunice is one of the most powerful women that I know because Eunice had to endure something in the life that I don't think any mother should go through. Is that a couple of years ago, I got a phone call on a Wednesday afternoon to rush from where I was, and Eunice uh, had the, um, the, the, the sad experience of coming home to a son that committed suicide. Uh, and, and don't feel sorry for her because it was at the funeral where I saw this woman's strength. And, and this woman was so powerful, and in the midst of a son at 17 years old, uh, September month, a few weeks from now, writing his final exams in matric, Come from a stable home, she discovers him hanging in the garage. Now that in itself is a picture, but what I saw at the funeral is a woman that explained to everyone, don't feel sad for me because this will only make me stronger. This will only give me every opportunity not to give up. The lesson out of Eunice's life is simple. No matter the circumstance, you cannot give up. Because somebody is expecting you to make it so that they can see the inspiration that is drawn out of the most difficult circumstance out of her life. The second woman is one of my favorites. She's not the favorite, but she's one. She's the, favorite. She's the woman that brought me into this world. And that's my mom. And here's the thing about my mom is that when I came home as a boy, 12 years old from the soccer field, living in Heidefeld, where I grew up, I came home and I, and I knocked on the door and there was chaos in the house. Chaos to the extent that my mom was shouting for her life. Now mind you, I need to tell you that my mom was, grown, uh, my mom was married to a man that was abusing alcohol. And, and this man physically abused her. And so I'm saying this because I've got permission to say it as well. But that day as a 12-year-old boy standing outside a big door that I couldn't break down because I was too small, I was too young, but it instilled something in my mind. It gave me a picture of a man that one day when I'm older, I'm going to take him out. That's the image that I had of this man. But that's also the very moment where I had an encounter with God. Because when I walked through the door, I saw my mom in blood, an electric cable laying aside of, the, of her bed because that was just used to beat her. I had that picture. But at the same instance, the opposite neighbor stepped into my life at that same process and took me out of that house and said to God, has got a plan with your family, Preston. And I was like thinking, I cannot even begin to understand about God right now if I have to see what my mom had to endure right now. Don't feel sorry for my mom. Because my mom has got a tenacious spirit in her that says, I will never give up no matter what. The lesson that I learned from my mom is the most powerful lesson that I can teach any person or any, uh, any uh, audience that I speak to is because subsequently, my mom, one day when I became 13 years old, and maybe when I became 14 years old, I said, just divorce him. You don't have to endure this. And her words to me was, it's easy to give up than to endure. Now, that's the kind of the emotional part of the story. But the great part of the story is that two years later, 
my father turned his life around like this. Like this. To the extent that today my father carries my mom in a pedestal. You know why? Because whenever I ask him what made you, what, why are you so over mom? He said because she had every reason to give up. But she stayed. You see? Some of you right now is with that man. Some of you right now is with that partner. But you know what my mom taught me? She says, Preston, the greatest power anyone can have is the power to forgive. You see, when you forgive, you liberate yourself. But you will just have to exist to become an inspiration to others that saw the brokenness, but now resource sees the healing. Let me give you the power of that story. My nephews, nine years old and 12 years old, will never know what it feels like to bro grow, grow up in a broken home because my father drew the line and he said, till here and no more further. That's the power of forgiveness. Now, it has to filter over to me, right? Because I have to understand that I saw that picture. So how do I rectify that picture? And one day my father sat me down and said to me, I can't change what I've done, but I need to understand where I come from because I could only do what I was taught. And subsequently finding out that he had to endure that same thing as a kid. But together we made a decision. It stops here. Right now my father's my best friend. My father, without fail, every Monday night takes my mom on a date. Without fail. It's actually so cheesy that we've come to a place where we laugh it off. If we want something out of my dad, we ask my mom. Because she gets everything right. See, because that's the power of forgiveness. But the third woman is the woman, she's my favorite. And I happen to be married to her. Because she inspires me every single day. Because I've known her for a very long time. But the third thing that this woman possesses is that she grew up in a tough environment where she entered into a relationship with a guy that made her enter up into an addiction of drugs. And her relationship with this guy ended up being that she found herself one day in a Camps Bay toilet, having just jumped out of a moving car because her life was at stake. But she looked herself in the mirror and she asked herself the question, is this really what I want? And she made a choice that day to walk out of the abusive relationship. And she walked into all that God has for her. You see, because all that God has for her wasn't because, I know what you're thinking, you thought it was me, it's not me. <laughs> I would love to believe that it was me, but that's not, our, I'm not that great. But she walked into a place where her life became a living testimony as to what God is in her life. Because right now, my, woman is, my, my wife is one of the most fearsome women that I know. Because she works in a space where she works with prostitutes. And she works with women that comes out of tough, sexual, abusive relationships. And she goes on the streets... She goes onto the platforms and she shares about human trafficking and she fights this cause because God woke her up in the midnight hour to say that your life, your circumstance, your situation was a platform for me to build what I'm about to do in the rest of your life. So Eunice had the tenacity not to give up. My mother had the power of forgiveness and my wife's story was of this nature that she understood her life was designed to make an impact. Now, you can either walk away today and decide to give up. You can either decide today to be bitter and, and walk around with your unforgiveness. Or you can come to a place and say, maybe what I've been through is a story that I can tell so that when other people hear it, it will inspire them. I've got five things that I want to leave with you and five things that I hope that you will take with you and that you'll never forget. In fact, even if you forget my name, I pray that you don't forget these five things because these are the five things that I believe can add so much value to your life. Now, I know you're recording, so I'm not going to look funny with an iPad in my hand. But I'm going to 
get that in. The first one is, you don't have a right to quote. You see, because quoting will mean that you succeed in defeat. The second thing that I want to give you is, you got to do an assessment of the people that's in your corner. Because if the people that's in your corner is down talking you on giving up, you've got the wrong people in your corner. I remember my mom, family members told my mom to give up on my father. 15 years later, our house, now I have to say this, Lucia, my mom, the family laughs when I say that, but I need to paint a picture of my mom and I can only describe a picture of my mom one way. <laughs> Medea. <laughs> but she's the saved version, version of Medea. She's the person that everyone comes to for advice. But you know what is the coolest thing about never giving up? Is that the people now come to my dad for the very same advice. So you don't have a right to quit. Be careful who's in your corner. Some of your friends, ladies, you got to change those friends. Because some of those friends is your problem. You cannot be fabulous or fierce with people that gives you negative conversations in your ear. You got to be careful who is in your inner circle. I love my wife. My wife says, Press, there's certain people I got to love from a distance. <laughs> and I love her for that. And she says, but the people that's in my life is my ride or die kind of people. To the older folk, we'll explain that on another occasion. <laughs> but she's my ride or die kind of person. The third thing, grow relationships. I'm, in a, I'm a relational person. I take care of relationships that's in my life. You see, because when I'm on a high, I remember who brought me to that high. But when I'm in a low, I made sure that when I was on my high, I invested into my friendships. So when the low hits me, I don't have to look who's there. They'll be there just because I've invested into them anyway. Don't make your life all about you to the extent that you become the talk of the town within your friendship circles that you forget that there's other people in your friendship circles. Take the time to be kind to your friends. Take the time to remember the significant times in their lives. It will go a long way. My friends, none of them want to be public speakers. They hate what I do. They say they can never do what I do. And I'm okay with that because if I wanted a replica of me, I would have been friends with me. But because I needed to have diversity in my life, I was careful on how I select my friends because every single person, all eight of them, plays a significant part in my life to where I want to go. But not just where I want to go, I pull them where they want to go. Don't be so selfish and think that your friendship circles is about you growing when you fail to invest in other people growing with you. The, the fourth thing, the fourth thing is what a thing that women struggle with. The fourth thing is, if you're going to go through this life, your greatest asset is the ability to ask for help. Don't be so proud and be so emotional and be so caught up in your prison that you fail to want to ask help because it's your greatest asset. You're going to ask for help anyway at some point. Don't ask for help when it's kind of too late. Ask for help when you can get there immediately. Because help, you never know. The other person always sits with the answer. Finally, my mom taught me this. And she says, Preston, if you can forgive, you liberate your life to such an extent that when your enemies look at you, they won't even get jealous. They will want to befriend you. Simply because they can't talk you down anymore because you're not bound by their conversation. You are liberated because of who God says you are. I want to conclude by saying to this, ladies, you are the most powerful individuals I believe in society. Don't downplay your story, but don't stop there. Don't let your story end by the abuse. Don't let your story end by the divorce. Or don't let your story end because you're single. 
continue to write your story because life is like seasons. There's moments in every season that you have to take out of it. Sometimes it's winter and sometimes it's spring. But you're going to pull out of every season what you need. So when you arrive at destiny and when you arrive at a place where your life is not about and destiny oftentimes is people thinking I've arrived somewhere. Let me tell you, destiny is not going to be that place. Sorry to disappoint you. Destiny is that place when you come into a place and you are content that your life is making an impact on the people that's watching you. In my final words, I wrote a book and in the book I quoted a, a phrase or a, there's a quote in the book that God gave me one day when I woke up and he says, Preston, don't hold on to the pain that you know, but push through to the blessing that God has in store for you. You see, some of you are holding on to what you know because you know how to manage it. But become so fearsome and become so fabulous that you push through your past and into the unknown territory that God has for you because it's there that your life is going to be a significant impact to those who are watching. I want to thank you for listening. But more importantly, when you walk out of here today, walk out with this knowledge that he who began the work in you will be able to complete it. Thank you. Preston, as our keynote speaker for the event today, um, maybe you can just share with the audience a little bit about not what you spoke about, but why you got involved with 50 Coffees and why I think it's important to, to be involved in, a, in an event like this, being one of the only men at a ladies' event. I think it's been a, a challenge in preparing for this, um, but the more I started thinking about it, the more I started realizing the unique opportunity. And I think one of the main purposes that I accepted the invitation was that I I believe everyone's got a story to tell and sometimes when it comes to women um, many of them are afraid to tell the stories because either they're still in that situation or uh, it makes them vulnerable and I think uh, we need to encourage people to share more stories because it's by sharing stories that the people listening to our stories get inspired and so um, as I drew strength from the three uh, very important women in my life or three women that played significant roles in my life, I think the, the aim was to draw their tenacity, their lessons, and, and give that lessons to the ladies that attended this event to be able to draw strength from that. If other people can get through it, if other people can come out of it, then I too can make that impact. And so oftentimes we think we don't have a role to play, but your story itself can touch a lot of lives. So. Numfundu, can you share with us a little bit about what you took away from the event, whether it was something that the speaker said or just something that God dropped into your heart? Um, it's a combination of things that Lucia said and the speaker said and the whole theme, it came to life today. As much as I was looking at it as being fierce and fabulous, I actually realized that as, as women, we are so strong from what the speaker said and every experience that we've gone through has somewhere somehow shape us and make us who we are. So uh, for me, what I'm taking away is, doesn't matter whether the story was negative, if the story was positive, it can encourage and inspire someone else. Which is exactly the, what 50 Coffees is about, inspiring people. Thank you so much, Mpunda, for sharing with us. Thank you. Like um, what Lucia said, we all have a story to tell and you know, no matter how small your story is, it could make a difference to someone else. So we should always be open to share our life story with someone because that could be exactly what that person needs to encourage that person to like go take that next step and you can get through whatever issues you have going on. So that definitely stood out to me that we shouldn't keep our lives ourselves, but we should you know, share certain parts of our lives with other people so that they can get what they need from our story. After the break, we also attended the Christian Dance Fellowship of South Africa's event, so stay tuned.
יברכך אדוני וישמרך. יאר אדוני פניו אליך ויחונקה. יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. the National Coordinator of Christian Dance Fellowship South Africa. Tell me a little bit more about the, um, the Dance Fellowship and also just the heart of the ministry itself. Well, the Christian Dance Fellowship is now 27 years old. We've actually been going for that long and um, celebrating our, our, our time together with the founder, who is Rosemary Raw. She's passed on, and we're doing a tribute tonight for her. Um, and so a little bit about the fellowship. We are a resource to the dancers. Our mission or our vision is to be visible, that is to be out there and showing everybody more about dance and the skill that is that we that they need to hone, being relevant. Times are changing, so the dance to a certain extent is also changing. It's not the liturgical dance like it used to be. Um, and so all sorts of modern styles have come on come through and then available for anybody who would really like to, to tap into our resources uh, for skills in dance. 
Okay, and um, as a ministry, it, even though you have fun while dancing, I'm sure, but as a ministry, it's also to reach people. And I know that you did a flash mob this morning. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, it was awesome. We went just around the corner in Steenberg. So we, our theme for the conference has been from the inside out. We dealt with issues from the heart. So we've been dealing with what is it um, that your heart has to your heart has to be right before you can even step out to get onto a stage, let alone go into the community. And uh, so we dealt with the with the inner. And uh, today we actually, well, yesterday in our plenary session, we dealt with the outer. And today we went and did it. So we took a, a team of the entire group went and we've done a flash mob. We just arrived, put the music on and went for it. And we had an entire community surrounding us. And we just shared the love of Jesus. We shared um, what, what Jesus means to us. And you know, this is, this is not about being inside a church. Uh, for me, it's always been take the dance out to where the church does not come. <laughs> We have to go out to save the lost you need to bring them into the church and not speak to the people in the church. You're so right. So before we go on, maybe just tell us a little bit more about what we can expect for tonight. So I've said that we're doing, um, it's the culmination, it's our grand finale. We've had two nights of just celebration and different kinds of dance. And tonight it's really all the workshops that have taken place are going on stage. So everybody from the children, we've had a children's conference, their dances are going on stage. And on, um, also with regard to the other adult sessions, those are going on stage tonight. And then we're doing two very special tributes. Um, and like I said, it, it's Rosemary Raw. She's, um, her husband will be here, the family will be here to receive just a, an award of, of tribute to her, the founder of our organization. And the other one is Georgie, and she was meant, Georgie Brody, she was meant to be here, but didn't quite make it onto the plane. And uh, so we, we, she didn't even know about it, it was going to be a surprise, but in absentia we're going to, going to award her for just a tribute. And she's been such a mentor and a, and a mother in dance to us. So besides all the dancing, some, some very special tributes. Lastly, Liesl, if you can just maybe tell our viewers, um, give them an encouragement of why they should get involved in dance or, you know, just uh, something that you want to share with the viewers about the conference or just dance in general. So I want to say that I believe every person should move for Jesus. Uh, the Bible says, um, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And in Psalm 150, it says, and praise him with dancing. So it's not just for the skilled dancer, but I believe the Lord wants us all to be free in our movement. And I think in Cape Town, we do it really well. <laughs> we get out of our seats and we really move. And I want to say that as you begin to move, your worship and your time and your expression to the Lord, it will change. Your, your, even your relationship can be affected when you start to move for Him. And so I encourage you, step out from what you always do, just maybe raising your hands or not even doing that, and allow the Lord to just move in and through you. And my encouragement to you is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might and all your soul. He wants to love you back. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was fantastic. Thank you.
We are now speaking to Beth Blewett and she is from Australia. Beth, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the organization um, that you're involved with and then also your involvement with the CDFSA here today? Uh, yes, I'm the director of Living Dance International. It's a dance organization which um, is involved in training teachers in dance curriculums and we're in five continents and I come around to various countries and I train teachers in the Living Dance International curriculums in those dance form, classical ballet, jazz and contemporary. And it's a dance form that brings um, honour and respect to um, each other. It's got, it reflects some Christian content in that it expresses expressive movement which, um, where children learn to respect each other, forgive one another and to actually um, make sure they're not saying unkind, cruel words. Though I'm mainly involved in the children here, I'm just working with the children, um, the dance curriculum itself goes from little pre-dance children right up to professional. So we have dancers all over the world in many countries learning the Living Dance International curriculums. Okay, that's fabulous. So that's a, a lot of info to, to take in. But have you been in um, involved in the other conferences with CDFSA as well, or is this year the first time? This is the first one with CDFA SA um, for me. But I know a number of the delegates. A number of the delegates who are teachers. I met them. They came to my conference in Switzerland, and when they saw what we were presenting, they invited me to South Africa. So that's okay, how that, I got here. That's fabulous. Thank you so much, Beth, for your involvement in this ministry and also in the conference this year, and for talking to us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jason, sorry, you are a choreographer with Out of Africa Dance Academy. Can you tell us just really quickly some, um, why you love dancing and why you chose to glorify God with your, with your dancing? Of course, yes. Um, okay, my name is Jason Mayer, a.k.a. Shaker. That's my stage name. And um, I love dancing. It's my passion. It's, it's something natural and something that is within me. Uh, it's in my family already. So it's my mother, my aunt, and my cousin all have studios and teach from hip-hop to contemporary to Latin to ballroom. And you know, I just love um, I love doing what I what I'm doing. Um, I, I teach dancing because you know I want to give back to the community. That's just how I am. I want to give back to kids. I love kids so much. I love, um, and that's our future. You know, and if um, I'm not gonna be doing that for South Africa and going overseas, which was my dream, but you know, God led me back to South Africa and said, you know, this is where you're meant to be. This is you know, this is your life. This is your lifestyle your dance lifestyle and you know I'm giving back to the community as best as possible what I learned from my knowledge to my dance moves to whatever it is and yeah it's a blessing for me to be teaching all these talented kids out there. Thank you so much Jason. Sure. <laughs> So 
all when the saints come marching in. We roll so deep that they can't believe we sold out seats to them CDs. Please don't sleep on the beat. Ah. Beat up these. Still don't get it what you keep up, please. We ain't no heroes for sale. If you bought one, better keep your receipts. Okay, I get it. I know what they're thinking. We some kumbaya singing. Corny Christians, keep your dishes. Buy a ticket to a concert. Pay a visit. Think it's odd. We them blues brothers. 116 on a mission from God. Uh, I don't think they get it, I really think what they gotta do is see it to believe it, I wasn't planning on leaving them Give me the microphone with no gimmicks, I really live it, it's authentic, I may not get known, but I don't get them in it Yeah, I wanna get it, what's another to come and get it? I want them to, I got it, they tell them we really win them They think that I'm tripping cause I'm living for more than just rapping What is what happens oh, when it's safe? Go watch your nigga 